Blood Jeopardy! Starring Rick Ming and Team Hufflepuff and Team Dominator. Who will win in this 40 minute long competition of wits? Yeah. <laughs> and then I actually am doing a panel next door after this. So, nice. Um, one other thing there are daily doubles, which you can double all of your money if you get it right, or lose it all if you get it wrong. No pressure. It's the joy of adulting. So, we're going to go over the categories. Are you ready? Dollar. Is in money. Noms. 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 Noms is in the tasty things that you crunch on. Oh, I think you're talking about the chili. Responsibility. What's that? Responsibility. What's How many people get that joke? Oh, I know. The youngins are in the town. Okay. Next. Where are we at? Nine to five. Oh, screw that. We're not nine to five. The pen is mightier. Mm hmm. Of course. The joke here? Of course. Yep. Yep. We're aware. I need a wife. So, with those categories. I'm going to flip my badge to see who goes first. Who wants the, uh, the dragon side? Alright, you guys get the, uh, the badge side. Ready? Alright, dragon side goes first. Pick a category. Noms for 200. Ring, ring, ring. This fruit is cheap and filling. It's sometimes used to mime a telephone. What is a banana? That is correct. $200. That's so good. All right. Oops. Don't read that one. Next. You keep going until you get it wrong. Money for $200. Money for $200. And you guys can totally snipe in and say if you know the answer and be like, yo, yo, yeah, roar. All right, 200 for money. What is planning how to spend your money called? What is retirement planning? This is retirement planning? What is, what is budget? budget? Budgeting. Let's see. All right, 200 for Team Dominator. Now, how many of you guys know about budgeting? Okay, so we'll spend a little bit of time on this one. <laughs> the idea behind budgeting is you have some money, otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? And you have possibly credit cards, bank accounts, you may make money from jobs, you may get money from relatives or friends or something else that we won't talk about here. So you have this pile of money and you have to use it when you're adulting in order to be able to pay for the things that you need and then save for the things that you want. And that's the big differentiator. The first thing you have to think about is what do I have to pay? That's going to be all of your credit card debts, it's going to be your rent, it's going to be food. Food is important, right? <laughs> that's the nouns category, what's cheap and easy. And also, you need to pay for any other expenses that you have, such as school, or insurance. you name it. Well, yeah, insurance, okay? Anything else? Yeah, all of the additional things for house and sewer, water, um, electricity. electricity. If you're in a condo, you have kind of fees in addition. So, you're already talking about multi-thousands of dollars for the bare minimum. You got your car payments, gas, you name it. Um, if you metro or take public transit, you've got to put that money in. So the first step in budgeting is to think about what do I need to pay and find out how much it actually is. Start to make a list. So the easiest way to start budgeting is to go through what you spend and keep track of everything. And there are tons of apps that will do this for you. You just have to literally remember to keep doing it. 
Once you do that, then you can start to say, I spend about X every month. I make about X every month. How do I get from just spending on what I need to do to being able to save? And so there's tons of online articles about budgeting. If you're interested, definitely give them a look. Um, I've given most of you my cards. Again, if you want more information, I'd be glad to share it. But that's kind of the basics of budgeting, is really taking a look at all your expenses and comparing that to how much you make. Some things you can't cut on. You can't cut the price of housing, usually. You can't like barter with your landlord. But for insurance, sometimes you can get discounts or find another insurance company that's cheaper that has the same coverage. And so you really have to start thinking like, do I need to do X, Y, and Z? Do I need to buy this food? Or can I buy the cheaper food and maybe it's not as tasty, but hey, you know, a banana's 19 cents versus like a $5 made pre-made dinner, right? You don't want to make your nutrition suffer, but you still want to find ways to save money. Like when I came here, I decided to drive an extra 20 minutes as opposed to paying $7 on the toll road. Yeah. yeah. Like it's a small decision, but if you save $7 once a week for 50 weeks, all of a sudden you've got over $200. It's the little things, and there's more in this category, so I don't want to spoil it. So with that, we will go on to the next question. You get to choose the category. Money for a hundred. When you don't own the place you live, if you are this. What is a renter? All right, a renter. That is correct for one hundred. So you have three hundred now. Yes. Okay. See, I can do maths. That's also <laughs> adults. <laughs> uh, any questions on renting? The idea with renting is that you don't own it, you're paying someone else who does. And it's not the best situation. If you can own, then you end up paying yourself, but you also end up paying to loan the money to actually buy it. So there are advantages and disadvantages. If your rent is, well, in the DC area, if your rent is over $2,000 a month, you probably want to look at buying. Because you can get a mortgage that you can pay for something nice for $2,000 a month. If it's less, or if you just can't afford to get a big loan, that's fine, but again, you have to look at the options. And there are financial planners that can help you say, okay, you earn this much, and you want to spend this much. You know, how much can you pay for a mortgage? What are the interest rates? There's all these little details on buying that I will not get into. Again, um, you can find it online. And actually, if you can't afford a financial professional, like I still can't, um, you, there are free agencies, and there's also like um, some schools, libraries, um, religious places offer. Uh, advice as well. So you don't necessarily have to pay anyone to get a financial advisor that has some level of proficiency. Uh, also, adults that are you know are responsible adults, like you can just ask them, hey, can you tell me a little bit about mortgages? I don't know anything. Like I learned everything about mortgage and interest rates from my dad. Um, so that's, it's tough, but the idea is renting is a first step and buying is a way to invest in yourself over the long tough and it takes a lot of work and you may end up living somewhere less convenient but if it saves you money you're putting money towards the value of the house at which when you sell it you hopefully will make some money or at least you'll have more money saved than if you just dump it into the renting income and that's what they call equity right so you have equity you have money in the home that you'll be able to then get back when you sell it I know right all this financial advisor stuff Welcome to Adulting 101, guys! Why do they just call it value? What happened? Why, why do we have to have all these fancy terms for things? It sounds like it's designed to confuse you. I think that's part of adulting, too, is getting confused by fancy terms that someone else made up because they thought they were special. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And you guys got it, so next category. Again, we have money, noms, responsibility, 9 to 5, dependence, my dear, and I need a one. Or anyone? Anybody on the team? You work together. Nine to five. Nine to five. How much? One to five hundred. Everybody likes the two hundred. It's a safe amount. It is. While work is meant to be eight hours a day, after a commute, relaxing, food, etc., there's not much time for this crucial uh, nocturnal activity. Yeah. Woo! You just sniped that one. What is sleeping? How many of you guys didn't sleep last night? No. no. 
medicine, take your meds. Um, that's something that may not always happen. And again, you can forget it if you're busy or if you leave them somewhere, do you have a backup set? Do you have a prescription that you can call in if you're traveling and something gets lost? Those are the responsible things. Uh, I'll tell a personal story. So my sister had gotten married to a really nice guy. He never told her before they got married that he was on antidepressants. And he stopped taking them because he thought that the wedding and living happily ever after was going great. And then he got really depressed and threatened to kill her. Oh, And then she found out that he hadn't been taking his meds. She got divorced. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say it's probably a bit when there's a threat to life, that's not that's, yeah. not a, that's a bit of a turn. That's a whole lot of It's a little bit of a turn. Yeah. So I hope nothing like that ever happens to you guys. But sometimes there's literally a chemical imbalance that may never get fixed. Talk to your doctors before you stop taking medications, please. And if you think you need medications, please talk to your doctor too. There is never any shame in saying that you have mental illness. There's never any shame in saying that you have an issue. It's only shameful if you don't get it treated and something bad happens. All right, can you guys all do that? That's real adulting, taking responsibility for yourself. Anyone else want to share a horrible med story? Sure. OK. Definitely take your antidepressants, because if you don't, you will get brain zaps. Oh, no. Which suck. Um, it's basically your brain is what's drawing from your drug, and your brain literally feels like every so often it's just going, <laughs> and then like I'll look around, and I'll go like this way, and my head, will, my vision, and like my brain, it almost feels like it's swiveling all the way around, and it's like, okay, what happened? <laughs> so it's it's kind of like being a little bit not so much fun, and not fun way. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Never oh, appreciate it. I have I have a story. Okay. Um, I, I went to my uh, psychiatrist and I asked for uh, something that could help me concentrate and help my depression. Mm -hmm. uh, I I got prescribed an antipsychotic. Oh. Yeah, that was not a fun experience. Yeah. The, the whole day was like I was walking through water. Oh my goodness. It's like like I was trying to draw and I didn't have to use like trying to draw here. Why am I using the water? Oh my goodness! Wow. Yeah, and I said, hey, I'm gonna stop taking. You did talk to your doctor about it. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> good, good. The whole was good enough. Yeah. And did you have to get a different doctor or what happened? Uh, no, that was just a, a, a mix up. Uh, that's a big, uh, English is not my second language. So English is not your first language. Thank you. Thank you. It's not my first language. So there was a communications issue. Okay. So I failed to explain why it was wrong mm -hmm. and I got prescribed wrong thing. Okay. So also keeping track of symptoms, things like that. Uh, again, I really like lists. That's my go-to. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm glad that it worked out. Yeah. yeah, great. Thank you again for sharing. OK, next category. What have we got, guys? What do you want to pick? to be here and say, I don't know how to adult, 
and try than to pretend to be someone and then deny that you have issues because you have to be perfect. If any of you have ever had to try and live up to someone else's expectations of you, you know it can be really tough. Yeah. My life was mostly just living up to expectations. To them, I sure up be married, have two cars, be a even millionaire. Oh my. I'm not those things, and my parents are not those things. And by the way, if they were taking, if they were here, they would utterly <laughs> fail as adults. Yeah. They've been renting a house for 20 years. Oh my. And that is an asbestos ring for the cost. Yeah. And they expect me to buy it. Oh. Yeah, they called recently and they're all like, hey, so can we, can you like give us a whole bunch of money? And it's like, they totally failed in raising them on so like all the stories, like because we live together, so it's like all the stories I've heard, it's like, and then they, they're constantly criticizing him for the Chinese whole thing. And then, um, then all of a sudden they're all like, oh, yeah, we're sorry for all that stuff, by the way, Give us lots of free money now. Yeah. Yeah. So I say, say, oh, we told you so. You were a failure. Blah blah. Hey, mom, I'm doing blah blah. Yeah, pop, keep sending us money. Right. Yeah. So you've got a double standard, really. Yeah. They they wanted you to succeed, but they want you now that you're succeeding to support some of the negative decisions that they make. Yeah. And so adulting is saying no, even when it's hard. Oh no, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad it's easy now for it's you. Easy, yeah. 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 Um, Expectations are tough, and it takes decades sometimes to get over your inner mind telling you in the voice of your parents or your loved ones, you're not good enough, or you're not like this, or I can't believe you're doing this. Why are you at a furry convention when you could be out, you know, schmoozing, rubbing elbows with those millionaires you're supposed to be friends with, Why right? Why are you a doctor yet? Yeah. <laughs> Why haven't you finished school? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's okay, and that's, I think, the hardest thing that we growing up are learning, is that you don't have to deal with it, but so many of us got brainwashed into it that you didn't know it any differently. So I'm happy that you're all here and sharing these stories. I mean, that's one of the big things between, like, the, our parents' generation and millennials, is they just don't get how much the world has changed since then, and how the odds are all stacked against us. Yeah. You know, they didn't really have that. They basically got everything. Yeah, and even if you say that, they still deny yeah. it. Yeah, um, the definition of being an adult, I think, is definitely changing based on the way that we are not growing up in the same way because we physically and financially cannot. So it's kind of fascinating to be here and seeing it from the two different lenses. Uh, and for those of you that do work with the older generation, like I do, uh, that's a serious grift that you always have to work with because the old people, they don't want recognition. They just want to do their hard work and, and continue on. And they don't they don't need to be quote unquote pandered. They don't need prizes. They don't need to be like able they, to... They can give us all their money. Yeah. <laughs> but, but they think that you should do your own financial work. You should make a life for yourself. You should make these connections. And so it's, it's really interesting. Um, I'm sure we could do an entire another panel just about the differences of millennials and, mm. uh, and boomers and the older generations, but that's for another time. So we'll go to the next category. All right. The pen for 300. The pen. No swat. When you bought, when you make a deal to buy or sell on Craigslist, go here oh. to ensure safety. Public plate. What is public plate? Close. No swat. You got it! Go to your dominator. Yeah, so there are actually official police station swap points for things like Craigslist now. So that you don't have to go to just some brightly lit parking lot. Oh, wow. How much did we win? Yeah, how much did we get? That was, uh... Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that was 300. So you are at five, and Hufflepuff is at 11. Yeah, so Google it. There are, in a lot of states, there are now police swap points. Some place that's secure in their, you know, facility, so you're not going to meet a creepster and get killed. That's cool. Yeah. That's responsibility, you know. I think killing is an important part of really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, if you can, and, and if you can drive a little further, maybe, um, it is a safer option. 
Yeah, and I mean, I'll always still take a friend with you, but if it's a if it's a sketchy deal and you say I'm meeting at the police station, they may like, and you're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> good job, guys. Okay, you get to pick a pack category. You need to go for it. Okay, sure. Uh, give us tiny white one hundred. One hundred. This weekly chore can really hamper your day. Which Why? Oh. <laughs> 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 this was good. <laughs> oh, laundry. Yes. Uh, doing laundry. Yeah, that's the thing. So either you're going to have to pay to do laundry somewhere else, or you may have your own washing machine, but that's a luxury at this point. Yeah. Cool. Hey, I have a question. Yes. Do you, does everyone want her to this question for anyone interested? Because I got a lot of, I got a lot of boos. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they were booing my fun and not you. If you want a lot of buzz in until the question is done. Okay, yeah. we'll respect that. Thank you. So no answering until I'm done speaking. I'll try and speak fast. So that's um, but yeah. Uh, now the old adage of taking your laundry home to your parents' house. I mean, that's still a thing. I wish. It saves you money. Do you have a friend that has their own house that has a laundry machine? If you're really hurting for money, I'm sure that they would be willing to let you use it. Drive six and a half hours. Right? But when you go home, if you're going to, you know, go for a week or something, you can always just take dirty laundry, wink, wink. I'm sure your parents will really hate me for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's the thing that you have to budget for as well, laundry. Both the price of the machines and the, um, the soaps and things that you use. I stopped using those little lint, I don't know, what the, the things they put in the dryer, the little dryer sheets. I stopped using Bounce. those, and I use little bouncy balls now. They sell them. They're reusable static guard balls, and they're like five bucks, reusable. I've had them for probably eight years, and you no longer need to buy the fabric softener dryer sheets. And plus, they don't smell. I have a, a sense sensitivity, so... Yeah. Less wasteful, too. Less wasteful. So dryer balls. You can get them on Amazon, CVS, you can get them anywhere. Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, I'm kind of stealing the thunder from a future question, but if we don't get to it, Bed Bath & Beyond will always honor any coupons, even if they're expired. So if you want discounts, bring your coupons and you'll always get something for at least 20% off. Sign up for their mailing list, you'll get free coupons and they never expire. Yeah, so Bed Bath & Beyond is a fantastic place if you're around here to be able to get your household goods. Uh, also, CVS is amazing. I almost always get things for 25 to 30% off plus free shipping. And they give you free money back after you buy certain things. So the, the, the joy of couponing is that you're saving money and you're also getting the things that you normally get. But that's uh, dryer, dryer balls are a way to get around that. I actually just found some at a, a kitschy like a souvenir shop. They're hedgehogs. They got little spikes on them with the little hedgehog nose. <laughs> and so they're tumbling around in your dryer. <laughs> it's kind of cruel but cute. So I bought them. <laughs> I bought some of the stocking stuff. I hope my sisters don't watch this video before Christmas. <laughs> so that's laundry. Any other questions about that? Okay, so that was 100. For Hufflepuff, you're at 12, and Dominator is at 5. All right, next question. We've got money, noms, responsibility, 9 to 5, and Penny's my dear, and I need a waifu. Anyone else? Um, we have to, um, 9 to 5 for 400. 400, 9 to 5. All right, and <coughs> to answer after I've finished. The, this scale, which is important during conversations, assures coworkers that you understand them. It leads to respect it leads them to respect or even like you. What is eye contact? Eye contact being nice. Let's see. Oh. Equal two? Oh, I forgot the answer. Active listening! Oh. <laughs> so these people are going, oh, it's because it's an adulting skill, right? <laughs> Active listening, again, something I highly recommend that you Google. The idea is that when someone talks, if you are not thinking about it, you may want to respond immediately. Whether it's a good thing, like they're saying, oh yeah, I like your shirt, and you're like, oh thanks, you know, I got it here, and here's my story, and I love things, and you just keep talking and talking, which disrespects their conversation. Or if they say something bad, like, I can't believe you just did that, and they're like, oh no, I didn't do it, what are you talking about? Sometimes
sometimes you don't know why they say those things. So the idea with active listening is that you say, you, you listen to what they say, and then you repeat it back. So they said that they didn't like what you did. Say, I understand that you're saying you didn't like what I did. Could you tell me why? Or why did that offend you? Uh, this is extremely important at work. When you have business meetings, and you need to make sure that people, when they're talking, that you are paying attention and respecting them. Because if you're doing anything else, whether it's on the phone or just not listening or taking notes, sometimes people in business meetings are like, what's going on? Why aren't you listening to me? And the other thing to do is, it's like complimenting people. If they say something, like I've been doing at this panel, like, so it's a good, thank you for volunteering, thanks for the answer. That's um, recognizing that they said something and then thanking them for their, their content. Because everyone wants to give to the conversation, they also want to listen to. So if you snub them and you just keep going, if I just kept asking questions and didn't listen to you guys, you probably all would have left by now. <laughs> So the idea of active listening is to pay attention to the people you're talking to and to take what they say and repeat it back to show that you understand them. Does that make sense? So we're supposed to repeat it back to make sure we understand You got it. <laughs> that was very well done. <laughs> and the other thing is if you're up here or you're getting asked questions, sometimes you can sneakily say, oh, what do you do? you mean that you should be? So you repeat the question back to the person that asked the question and have them answer it because they have an idea in their head of what the answer should be and you're either proving them right or wrong. Would you like to prove them wrong or would you like to hear what they have to say? Adulting! Yeah. Alright, so nobody got that so we'll let you, um, you guys pick that one. So we'll let you guys pick. Oh, the pin is right here for 500. 500! All right, you can double your money here. Daily double! Double anyway. All right, so this is still for 500. <laughs> we'll not take it. That means that only this team can answer. Often advocated by Mr. T, what used to be done in correspondence can now be done by this method to keep in contact with your maternal relations. Often advocated by Mr. T, what used to be done in correspondence can now be done by this method to keep in contact with your maternal relations. What is uh, calling your mom? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Wow, I was thinking milk. Good oh job! God. That was the daily double. Nice work, team milk. Milk. Yeah. 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 Yeah, um, if you do have good relations with your parents, they really do appreciate a phone call. And um, even uh, extended relatives. That's something that it took me a while to understand because I had some expectations my parents put on me. And being independent and going to school, I was like, hey, I'm free. I actually became pen pals with my grandma at that point, which was adorable. And she really, I'm still a pen pal to this day. So she adores it, but she's kind of that old school correspondence. And nowadays, you have a mobile phone, you can text, you can call. Uh, I call my parents uh, once a week if I can. Sometimes it can be a little annoying for me, but for them, I mean, they spent 20 years raising me. The least I can do is give them a 20-minute phone call once a week. It really does help your relations and to show that you do appreciate them. And hey, maybe you'll learn something about the mortgage, right? So call your mama. All right, that means you get to pick again. Pick the winner last time. Yeah. Uh, waifu for 500. Waifu for 500. <coughs> to meet a real life waifu, you will have to have the courage to ask this preliminary question to begin our relationship. Would you like to go out? What's courtship? What would you like to go out? I'm taken, sorry. Aww. <laughs> But it is correct. Um, one of the things that some people debate about in the adulting world is whether or not you need to officially begin a relationship. I recommend that if you want to, it's still worth asking that question. Um, the other thing is uh, exclusive relationships, right? Nowadays, it's more common that you're seeing multiple people and kind of getting a feel for them. Not everyone is comfortable with you seeing other people, even if it's not kissing, right? So when you find someone you like, ask them. 
I, it takes courage, trust me. It took me many years to realize that as a woman, I could ask a guy to go out with me. Ooh. I know. Uh, so ask, and then also ask, does it, does it, would you like it to be mute, uh, exclusive? And they can say, what do you mean? That's what my husband said when I first met him. He's like, I thought we were exclusive. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. I, it was not at that point. I was just, you know, fishing. And so those are courtesy, again, that politeness that you want to share with the person that you're interested in being with. Any questions on that? All right, now that I've rejected you, you can have another question. <laughs> That was 500, so you guys are now at 15, and Hufflepuff's at 12? What? Oh. What happened? Okay, I'm Category. Um, money for 200. Money for, uh, 200 is already been taken. Would you like three? The proportion of a loan that is charged as an additional expense to the borrower, typically expressed as an annual percentage of the loan outstanding. What is interest? Everybody gets that one. We're all horribly in debt. <laughs> I wish I was in debt. I used to be a student loan counselor. And I <laughs> still have one. Yeah, you call it. No one in this room could forget that word. Honestly, guys, you have an amazing opportunity right here. Would you like to talk about interest? Oh, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> it capitalizes yearly, depending. Um, compound interest is worse. Don't do it. Don't do and it. Stay away from private loans for the love of God. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, uh, if you have student loans, call your service. your servicer. Do not go with those third party people. They will fleece you for money. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. <laughs> There's actually a program that we were both a part of that would actually forgive a portion of your student loan payments or your student loan debt. And there are third party uh, businesses out there that say, oh, we'll fill out the paperwork for you, and, and we'll help you all this. All you have to do is pay a one-time fee of $600,000. Save it! Yeah, and you can call your servicer and just ask, and they'll help, mm -hmm. and that's it. So we got real pissed off about that, especially when they call on behalf of the borrower, acting as them, and we're right. like, we know you're not who you say you are, but we can't do anything. I had a call about a week ago. A lady called in and said, my name is Amanda Smith. Well, that's not the name we have on file. I'm looking at a marriage certificate from a week ago. Oh, she gosh. got married. <laughs> I'm single. My name is Amanda Smith. I'm like, no, ma'am. She calls in again. My name is Amanda Smith. Talk to someone else. We don't have that name on file. I'm single. My name is Amanda Smith. She hangs up, calls back in a third time. Mm. My name is Amanda Jones. Oh. How did she get the right name? Right? Yeah. Yep. So it could have been something as simple as a Google search. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the information changes that quick. Yeah. She just got married. Uh, it's really weird. Yeah, but I've also looked up on certain websites, ones that will be like, we found five entries for this person, you know, in Harrisburg or whatever, and they'll have you know, yeah. Well, the creepiest part about that is because uh, companies sell that information, right? As soon as it's out there, it's in the plot. Sometimes we don't even know how to use that. Sometimes they call people. Yeah. And they're like, oh, we have this wonderful new program. No, you don't. The federal government has this new program. <laughs> yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, we don't get into it here, and we only have probably about eight or ten minutes left because I have to go next door for my next panel. But um, talking about that, it's 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 very true that personal information on the internet you should be careful about. Uh, a because you need a job, and people will now research your social media habits, and B because you can have information theft. So it's always good to lock the profile to friends only. It's always good not to friend someone just because they said they have something in, in, uh, in common with you. And now I'll say for me personally, I don't friend a lot of people because I have a Facebook page that I would rather friend you with. So if you haven't gotten one of these yet, pass them around. It's um, business cards, you just slide them out like candy. So I know you guys got them, but you can just pass them back to the new folks. 
So you can friend me on my page, but you can't friend me personally unless I hang out with you for more than an hour, uh, which I'm sure could be a challenge. I'd love to meet all of you further. But the idea is I don't want some random stranger to take my information and then all of a sudden they've got my credit cards and I'm more in debt. So yeah, safety of information is also a very adulting thing to do. All right, so we'll do probably one more question and then we'll go to final Jeopardy. Dominator has 15, Hufflepuff has 12. And uh, did you guys pick that category? Yeah. Okay, so do another one. Money, not responsibility, nine to five, ten, and um, what do? Why do? We've got three and four hundred left. Three hundred. Three hundred. What goes to? Uh, who goes to a real bank? I need my wife to schedule these, which will ensure I don't miss a credit card payment. Automatic payments. So another secret to being an adult and saving money is scheduling auto payments by either having your bank account or your credit card linked to bills. Now, as we mentioned at the beginning, for those of you that came in late, budgeting is the most important thing about adulting. So if you know that you have certain fees that are going to be charged every month, set them up to automatically withdraw so you avoid late fees. I'm not going to ask if you've been hit with late fees, but if you have, it can be painful. And 20 bucks here and there, all of a sudden you're a few hundred less. As opposed to put the auto payment on your credit card, get credit card rewards for paying on the credit card, and no late fees because you're paying on time. That's the secret. It's all these little things that can just add up over time. Um, does anyone have any questions about auto payments? I really can't go into too many details, but most institutions now have some form. You either have to mail it in, call it in, or connect it online. And it's usually bank or credit card. Our family used to get a lot of uh, late fees oh. before the age of the internet where everything had to use it to set up auto pay. Yeah, it was tough back then. Okay. And so that was 300. And that ties us. Uh -oh. oh man, so I guess it is time. For, well, yeah, it's time for Final Jeopardy. Let's keep it tied. Final Jeopardy. So for this one, we're going to go to a question. You're going to, as a team, come up with the answer. And you bet how much of your $1,500 you want to put. So it could be all, and if you get it right, you'll automatically win or type. Or it could be a portion so that if you get it wrong, you may still have a lot of money. And this is the strategic part of Jeopardy. So first you're going to get together and decide how much money you're going to invest in the question. Okay, both of you guys are going all or nothing? All or nothing. All right. I tried. Now, for this one, you're supposed to write the answer down, so whisper quietly so the other team doesn't hear you, okay? And then I'll ask you for your responses in like 30 seconds. All right, final Jeopardy! Adulting can be hard. Use this manifest to keep track of everything and cross things off as you get them done. I didn't say it was going to be hard. Alright, we'll give you another 10 seconds. Yeah, uh, next door is um, cosplay for company. Yeah, so we'll just kind of migrate over there. Alright, now. How much did you wager? Oh, Fifteen hundred. And your answer? What is the list? What is the list? Yours? What is the list? Yeah. Congratulations, you're all adults! Yay! Yay!